Take a look at the starting lineups. Danielle Robinson coming off. Ten assists in game two. McBride, McCautry, Asia Wilson, and Carolyn Swords for Vegas. With the Seattle Storm, Sue Bird, Jewel Lloyd, Alicia Clark, Brianna Stewart, and Natasha Howard. A 2-0 series lead in these best of five finals for Seattle. And game three is underway. Seattle wins the tip. Here is Bird. A finals record, 16 assists in game one at 10 in game two. And immediately, we're going to have an offensive foul as Seattle turns it over. Natasha Howard whistled for the personal. And that is worth watching because Howard, from time to time, does find herself in foul trouble. And Natasha Howard has the, the defensive assignment of being on Asia Wilson. And she has done a really good job all series long making things difficult for Asia. Robinson turns the corner, didn't have the angle. Another offensive rebound for Swords, who puts it in. Carolyn Swords has been terrific in her minutes, in particular getting to the offensive glass, has the finish as well there. Vegas scores the first points of game three. Here is Bird, she will take, can't hit from three. The rebound back tapped out of bounds by Howard, and it's Vegas basketball. Gary Kloppenberg, the head coach of the Seattle Storm, Dan Hughes, Seattle's usual head coach, was not medically cleared to be in the bubble, but he has been very engaged and active from his home with the group, watching and cheering on, plus reviewing film as he watches, as Asia Wilson lays it in, and Gary Kloppenberg told us before the game, he said, you know what, you slide over one seat, you end up with a lot more gray hair. <laughs> but right now, he's got to figure out how to keep Vegas out of the paint. Their first four points have come inside. And you see Seattle trapping Angel McCartney, moving the ball around. Vegas gets an easy look for Asia Wilson. 4 nothing start for Vegas, exactly what they needed. Lloyd, a three, no good. And Swords the rebound. Lloyd had a playoff career high, 28 points in game one. McCautry catch, nice. fire, and the connection from three. And you couldn't have drawn up a better start than the one the Aces have had here in the first. Angel McCautry started game one, five for five from the three-point line. Adds so much to their team when they can get production from the perimeter and not just the paint. Lloyd dips inside, up under and in for Seattle's first bucket of the game. Vegas had stretches in game one where they simply could not guard Jewel Lloyd off the dribble. Here's Wilson raising up and connecting. Asia Wilson has hit her first two from the floor. It's good to see Asia Wilson in a flow. Seattle has not sent early defensive attention to her. They wait for her to put the ball on the floor. A 9-2 start for Vegas facing elimination in game three. Lloyd can't finish and it's out of bounds off of Howard. And it will be Las Vegas basketball. Asia Wilson, when she has one-on-one -on -one coverage, is so difficult to defend. Howard right there, but it's not going to matter. Well, how about this? That was not just out of bounds on Natasha Howard. That is ruled a foul on Natasha Howard. That is her second. So Howard goes to the bench early in this first quarter. What does that do for Seattle, Rebecca? Oh, that's huge. I mean, she's done a nice job on the defensive end, but offensively, she is very difficult for Carolyn Swords to defend. Swords will have a much easier time with Mercedes Russell. And Wilson gets a whistle here. Asia Wilson is going to shoot a pair, and Mercedes Russell or will they give Clark that foul? I believe they will give it to Alicia Clark instead, her first. And three fouls now called on Seattle. And you see the numbers there in terms of the free throw attempts. That was a big point of discussion for Bill Lambeer after game two, talking about how he felt his team should have been there a lot more than just five times. And we do see when coaches mention something like that, plant that seed after a game, before a game, you do get results sometimes, yeah. and so far, Bill Lambeer's team has gotten the whistles in this first. An 11-2 Vegas lead, less than three minutes into game three. Clark squeezes it into Stewart, who lays it in.
Wilson matched up on Clark, raises up and gets the roll. What a strong start for the MVP, Asia Wilson. Eight points already in this game. Yeah, Seattle switched there defensively, and Asia Wilson had the height advantage on Clark. Nice take, though. Jewel Lloyd continuing here to be able to slice inside. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, Jewel Lloyd has been terrific here in the finals, except for game one where she was 6 of 20. Since then, she said, you know, my teammates get me the ball in places where I can hit those shots. I just have to do it. They're trusting me with the ball in my hands, and we're already seeing them go to her early and often, and she is connecting. It's nice to see her off to this quick start. Yeah, Holly, of course, talking about the work of Asia Wilson thus far in this game, off to a 3 of 3 start from the floor. Stewart, jab step, and the jumper. That is difficult to defend. Wilson again back to work. Wilson, that's what Holly was talking about. But you'll notice when Asia Wilson leaves her feet to take a shot, Seattle is making sure not to be right in her grill. They are making a concerted effort not to foul her on those shots. Ten points for Wilson thus far. Clark will fire. No. Russell. The rebound poked out of bounds by Danielle Robinson. Mercedes Russell was wide open under the basket. The way Vegas is switching and then trying to get back to get a big player on a big Seattle's been able to take advantage of that to get the ball to open shooters on the weak side throughout this series But that time they missed Russell wide open inside bird Dumps it into Russell and Russell will finish that one Subert's not gonna miss you. If you're wide open, Subert will find you First assist of the game for bird first bucket for Russell. It's a 15-10 Vegas lead Almost halfway through this first quarter. The Storm looking to clinch a title tonight as Stewart is hit with the personal. And that will be the fourth team foul. Excuse me, make that the third team foul against Seattle in this first. And you see Asia Wilson has matched the Storm scoring so far in this first quarter. Playing with really nice patience and poise when she catches the basketball. Wilson again. Not that time, but how about Swords on the offensive glass? Her second put back already in this first quarter. Stewart gets it to Bird. Clark tried to get it out of her hands before she had it. Russell has the switch on Robinson and takes advantage. Yeah, when, when Sue Bird and, and Brianna Stewart are involved in an on-ball screen, Vegas switches and then sends Carolyn Swords to help. So that's the weak side area that will be open. Wilson back to work. Asia Wilson gets another whistle. This one will be on Mercedes Russell, her first. And Asia Wilson back to the line. A five-point lead for Vegas early, looking to continue their season. Bill Lambeer said Asia Wilson will get her 20 and 10. She wouldn't get 40. She just might. The WNBA Finals 2020 is presented by YouTube TV. 85-plus live channels and unlimited DVR. YouTube TV. Try it free. And by Taco Bell. Order ahead and pick up your favorites at our... Let's see what's possible. Brought to you by Deloitte. There's just been great balance by Vegas on the offensive end of the floor. Swords has gotten in on the action. Of course, Asia Wilson carrying a big part of the load. And Angel McCartry doing her thing as well. Asia Wilson is going to be the focal point on the offensive end, but she's had great support, 70% right now, Vegas shooting from the floor. And one of those pieces of support, Carolyn Swords. For more on her, let's check in with Holly.
Well, it has been such a remarkable and unique journey for Carolyn Swords. She actually retired from basketball in January. They had a big party for her and everything. In fact, her cubicle at MGM, where she started her marketing job, is still decorated with all of her retirement stuff. <laughs> but then she was furloughed after the pandemic hit. She was furloughed and taken off that job and was kind of waiting at home when Bill Lambeer called her in May and her Dan Pat over there, GM, and said, hey, would you think about joining us for the bubble after Liz Cambage was made medically opted out and she said let me think about it she called him about over the weekend and said yes i will join them so january retires july she's in the wobble and now here in october here she is fighting for a WNBA championship what a crazy wonderful journey for carolyn swords i mean it's it's just a, a story you love holly it's impossible not to as you mentioned cambage opts out park jisoo opts out swords opts in and has played an enormous role for this Vegas team. As Stewart, it's the jumper. Yeah, clear that Seattle wanted to get Seward a touch. That's where they were looking in the post before the foul was called. They want to get her going. Nineteen fourteen, Vegas in front. First quarter of game three. Seattle a 2-0 series lead. Best of five finals. Wilson beat the buzzer, Swords another offensive rebound. And now Robinson had position, flips it back out to Wilson. Her 17-footer rolls off. This time, Seattle secures the rebound, and McCautry will get hit with her second personal. And how is Carolyn Swords getting all of these offensive boards? Well, sometimes it's because of Seattle's defensive schemes, where Brianna Stewart is not right next to Swords to box her out. Not a ton of contact, but... The officials have clearly been calling it closely so far this game. Swords will check out Emma Cannon in. McCautry now with two fouls. By the way, Asia Wilson's 12 points in the quarter, the most she's had in a quarter yet in this postseason. Clark into the center of the lane and just could not finish. Well, we saw that in game two as well. When she has the size advantage on McBride, they will look to post up Alicia Clark. Jackie Young into the game for Vegas as well. Wilson back to Young. Young kept that pivot foot down. Here is Young, denied by Bird, who saves it off her. Out of bounds, and they're going to say that Bird was out of bounds as she did so. Let's see. Ooh. Did Sue touch it again after? Let's see. Oh, she I think she just out. threw it out herself. Yeah. yeah. Optical illusion. Eric Bruton wasn't falling for it. Nope. Wilson can't finish. Another offensive rebound, but Cannon put it down, and that was danger with Lloyd lurking. How about Wilson coming around for the steal on the post entry from Bird? And now Bird will take the foul on Robinson, but Seattle is over the limit, so that's just putting Robinson at the line. Not sure if Sue Bird was aware. As, no, she wasn't. Yeah, she was not. <laughs> <laughs> she was not. Let's take a look at the upcoming WNBA final schedule. ESPN 2 Thursday. If necessary, it would be game four. Vegas and Seattle will be a 7 Eastern tip. And that would be on ESPN2. For more on these games, please go to WNBA.com or visit the WNBA app. And Ryan, Vegas is doing a great job getting the ball in the paint. They are doing a great job of holding on to the ball, not turning it over, and getting good shots. And the big result of that for Seattle, Seattle hasn't been able to get out and run. And that's where they have been so good and successful against Vegas. Well, Bill Lambeer said, you know, we have to stop being our own worst enemy, especially when it came to turnovers there in game two, 16 of them, which of course gives Seattle those opportunities to run. Stewart, that is a deep catch, and that's going to be a bucket every time. Yeah, it, with the way Vegas is switching on ball screens with Brianna Stewart, you're going to have those looks inside with Stewart on a little. Stewart is 4-4 four four from the floor. She has eight. Wilson flips it in. A 14-point first quarter for the MVP, Asia Wilson. <laughs> Clark, grab dribbling Young down, draws two. Canada, not really where she wants to shoot from. That is, can't get the roll though, and Wilson falls in the rebound. 
Robinson had it poked from behind by Stewart, and then Robinson peddled it out of bounds. Here, you get a small player who has to switch out on Brianna Stewart, and she can just turn over easily, shoot over Sugar Rogers. This isn't nearly as easy for Asia Wilson, going against two long defenders. The lefty can still finish. Epiphany Prince can't hit the three. Clark the offensive rebound. How about Stewart? She got it on a triple. Brianna Stewart with 11 first quarter points in Seattle's first three of game three. Jackie Young will take, can't hit, rebound. Stewart had it, lost it. Vegas grabs it. And McCannon with the push off and it was in clear sight. So Vegas is going to turn it over on the offensive foul. Uh, she didn't need to push off there either. And Epiphany Prince with the long one. Great rebound by Clark. And she knows if you don't have the look right away, find a three-point shooter spotting up. And Brianna Stewart, that's a pretty good target. What do you think about the first quarter battle between the top two MVP vote getters, Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart? That's exactly what we were hoping for, right? Wow. Just incredible play from both of these all-stars. As he Magbagor in for Seattle. Seattle has shaved the deficit to two. And now this game is tied as Canada hits the jumper. Jordan Canada had a huge performance in the fourth quarter of game two. Vegas had a nine-point lead in this quarter, their largest of the series. And now a turnover from Vegas, and Seattle could jump in front. Jordan Canada, we talked about it in game two. She was able to drive to the basket, hit one of those mid-range shots, but Vegas, those are the turnovers that have hurt them all series long, unforced. And now four turnovers in the quarter for Vegas after they kept it under wraps through the early stages of this frame. Four second difference, game and shot clock. Canada hits again, and Seattle has its first lead. Robinson can't connect, and that will do it for the first. Vegas got off to a tremendous start, led by nine from Brianna Stewart, and the Storm erase it and have a two-point lead after one. Only fitting that in a closeout game, the top two vote-getters in the MVP race this season are shouldering the load. Brianna Stewart for Seattle, and there is the MVP. Welcome back here with Las Vegas Aces, Asia Wilson. And Asia, this felt like a much more urgent and efficient quarter. How did your team get off to such a good start? I mean, we know what's on the line. Our backs are against the wall. Uh, we're here. This is a go so big or go home type game. So we can't really leave anything. We got to leave it all out there. Like, we got to come up with everything. You are scoring well in that first quarter over length of Mercedes Russell, Brianna Stewart. How yeah. are you more determined with your shots and making those fall? Uh, I just got to go. I just got to feel it. I'm just out there hooping. Uh, nothing on me, no pressure on me, so I'm just going. Thank you, AJ. Well, on one hand, Rebecca, if you're Vegas, you say, okay, we got to the line more. Asia Wilson got going. We were able to do a lot of things well, got out to a nine-point lead. On the other hand, it's like, wow, Seattle didn't play anywhere near their best basketball, and they still ended up leading by two at the end of the first. Yeah, but you have to feel good about the production you're getting from Asia Wilson. You need to clean up the turnovers. That's been a common theme for Vegas throughout the course of the finals. Canada. Little hesitation, and scoops it in. A Mark Jackson-like finish from Jordan Canada. She's been really good. She has been really good over the course, in particular, of the last two games of the finals. McBride can't bank it in. Russell, the board. Canada, not that time. Wilson able to control the rebound for Las Vegas. Seattle on an extended 13-2 run dating back to the end of that first quarter. And Vegas has now missed eight of its last nine shots. As he Magbagor, the 21-year-old, can't quite finish, but does take the contact. And we'll go to the line as Swords is slow to get up. Yeah, 6 4 Ezzy Mag Bogor has got some quickness to her, and so she can do this, gets a st step on Asia Wilson, gets to the rim.
This is the YouTube TV Try It Free Throw. Watch WNBA games and 85 plus live channels when you try YouTube TV for free at tv.youtube.com. Try it free throw, man. That's it. By the way, a, a storyline that continues to be a factor, of course, in this series, Derricka Hamby out for Las Vegas, the two-time sixth woman of the year, tore a ligament in her knee in the semifinals against Connecticut, missed games four and five, and has not played in these finals. Vegas managed to win games four and five against Connecticut to advance to the finals, but they have not found victory here yet in the finals as Magbagor air balls the three. That's a young player shot in this part of the of game three of the finals. That's not a shot you should be taking. Young gets a whistle against Canada there and Vegas will go to the line to try and end a scoring slump that's lasted nearly four minutes now. And to revisit the, the part about De'Erica Hamby, she is a mobile post player who brings a ton of energy and especially against in this matchup against Seattle, she would match up really well with either Brianna Stewart or Natasha Howard. And, and sometimes in this series, one of the things that Vegas could lack is energy. Well, that's what she brings off the bench. So it's a huge miss for Vegas not to have her against the Seattle Storm. Can space, too, when you're talking yes. about a mobile big. You know, she can hit from three. Some of the aces don't have a lot of outside of Kayla McBride. Yes. Aces have already gone to the line more in game three than they did all of game two. Stewart pulled the string on it. Robinson looking to run with it. Wilson is fouled by Stewart, and I believe that is gonna be number two on Brianna Stewart, and it is. So you have two on Natasha Howard. She got those early. Now you have two on Brianna Stewart. So if you're Vegas, keep feeding Asia Wilson. Seattle was on an extended 17 to two run before those free throws from Young and now McBride makes it four straight for Vegas. Canada zipping into the paint, couldn't push it home. Swords claws get another rebound, her sixth already in game three as Young dribbles it off her own foot. Out of bounds, Vegas turns it over. Kayla McBride is so good coming off screens and Epiphany Prince gets caught up in how quickly McBride gets her feet set and that ball released. McBride struggled in the semis against Connecticut. She averaged just eight points, was two of 14 from three, but through the first two games of the finals, averaged 13 and a half points and seven of 13 from three. Sue Bird back in for Seattle, along with Howard Lloyd, Prince and Stewart. It's Wilson, Swartz, McBride, Robinson and Young for Vegas. Bird will take, can it from three. Howard the offensive rebound, looking for help. Somehow got it out to Prince. She can't connect and Stewart is gonna get called for her third foul. And this is a massive call with 7.13 to go in the second quarter. The 2018 league and finals MVP has picked up her third. Yeah, Brianna Stewart has not been in foul trouble at all in these finals, and she crashes the glass. Yes, that's an offensive foul. She goes right into Kayla McBride's back. All right, Rebecca, now how does Seattle survive here without Stewart? Probably for the rest of this half. Yeah, they're going to need Jewel Lloyd to step up on the offensive end of the floor. Mercedes Russell would have been the defender on Asia Wilson anyway. Here is Lloyd drawing two briefly. Clark on the attack. Can't cup it in. Russell trying to save it and did right to McBride for Vegas. One on one. McBride, no good transition. D there from Bird. Lloyd running the break, three on two. Russell lays it in on a gorgeous touch pass from Howard. The unselfish nature of the Seattle Storm is at its best when they are out in transition. How about your bigs passing it to one another? McBride raises up, can't hit. Box out Howard. Bird running. 
After Angels miss, here's Lloyd on the jumper. Drew Lloyd becomes your number one option if you're Seattle, in particular without Brianna Stewart in the game. McCautry back at it. Her jumper is good. Angel McCautry. Bird no look to a running hour for two. How many times have we seen Sue Bird do that already in these finals? Everyone follows her eyes. And she passes to an open teammate running the floor. And you see, we got to look at the keep Sue fresh Kyrie's too. It's a beautiful sneaker. Got to rock kicks like that when you make passes like that. Sue Bird is going to look one way, but her teammates know if I run the floor, it doesn't matter which way she's looking, she's going to put it in my hands. Learned a lot on the journey to this moment. But as we talk, the best version of this team is in the playoffs and now in the finals. We're a team and an organization that appreciates winning the day-to-day -day with our culture till we find ourselves on the doorstep of more championships. Storm, yeah! Go, Go Storm! storm. That is an adorable message that Seattle coach Dan Hughes sent to the team on the eve of the finals to give them some motivation. Dan Hughes, the coach of this team, in 2018 when they won the championship, medically opted out of this season after he was not cleared. I know he wishes he was here, um, but he has been an integral part behind the scenes, I know, for this team, and he has been a great support for Gary Kloppenberg, who is here coaching the team. Yeah, Holly, not cleared medically, but still such an active part of the Seattle Storm franchise. Constant communication and such a, a great relationship between he and Gary Kloppenberg as well as they've guided the Storm to the brink of another championship. I highly recommend it going to SI.com and reading the story that Greg Bishop wrote about watching the game on Zoom, game two with Dan Hughes. Robinson taking her time and flipping it in. Really working the switch well there. Danielle Robinson with Mercedes Russell switched off to her. Wow, Jewel Lloyd took a shot from Kayla McBride. And Lloyd shaking it off. Right, looking at the right side of the floor. Drew Lloyd running by. Was there that much contact? Well, from? McBride gave a little, and then Lloyd might have embellished, embellished as yeah. well. Yeah. Lloyd throws it away. McCautry on the steal. McCautry third all time in playoff steals. Angel doubled, finds Robinson. She can't hit. Rebound Howard. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, on that last Danielle Robinson bucket that was good, you said something important is that she took her time. Bill Lambeer, in their last timeout, had been yelling at his team, stop with the uh, 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 speeding up. Everything's too fast right now. Calm down. Slow down. Run our offense. They've got to take better, better care of the basketball. It is six turnovers already in this first half, and th those were the best Bill Lambeer side effects I could mimic, but that's exactly what he said. Very nicely done, Holly. As Clark Kicks right, the on. three on the delivery from Bird. First three of the game for the WNBA three point shooting leader for a second straight season, Alicia Clark. Timeout, Vegas. What did Holly say? Stop with the uh 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 uh. <laughs> Super. Most years between first and last championship, well, Babe Ruth went 17 years, as did Jim Palmer. That's the record in baseball. How about Chris Chelios? 22 years between Stanley Cup titles. Kareem, 17 years between finals championships. Tom Brady, 17 years between his first and his sixth. Sue Bird already has the WNBA record. 
14 years between titles. Should Seattle hold on tonight or clinch this series at some point in these next three games, she would extend her record to 16 seasons between titles. Just incredible consistency from Sue Bird, who's having another fine game tonight as Asia Wilson just got her first field goal attempt of the second quarter. Yeah, it's remarkable to, to think that it took that long, especially considering Natasha Howard's in foul trouble. Brianna Stewart's out of the game with foul trouble. Clark can't lay it in. Fingertips an offensive rebound. Here is Howard. Crab dribbling in, shoveling to Russell. Good D from Wilson. Vegas controls. Seattle had just a two-point lead with 7.13 to go in the second when Stewart went to the bench with three fouls. They have actually extended the lead since Stewart went out as Lindsey Allen just chucked that out of bounds. You have to play through Asia Wilson. They did a good job on that possession until the turnover because when the double comes, she'll find the open player. But once again, another one of those unforced errors by Vegas. You see Asia Wilson, who was just a beast in the first quarter, has not gotten the same opportunities here in the second. Here is Bird around the screen from Howard, and it's going to be a foul against Lindsey Allen. It'll stay here with Seattle. That's a third team foul against Las Vegas. 2.20 to go in the second quarter of game three of these best of five finals. Seattle a 2-0 series lead. Lloyd back to Bird. Screen coming from Russell. Five to shoot. Nice find. Bird to Russell and Wilson with the eraser rejection. And on the other end, Lindsey Allen can't turn it into a bucket. That's an offensive foul. And another Vegas turnover, their eighth. But can I please see that Asia Wilson block again? That wow. was just a monster save by Wilson. Woo. I mean, it is your birthday, so I'm sure at some point, at some point, Will. At some point, Will. <laughs> Are you having a nice birthday, by the having way? Having a great birthday, Ryan. Thank you. Happy birthday to Thomas as well, your son, turning 12 today. Kurt Miller's birthday. That's right. Sylvia Fowles' birthday. Wow, a lot of people. Papa Rucco, my dad. If you have a birthday and a comment, please tweet us. <laughs> Asia Wilson getting called for that foul as she tries to hedge out on the on-ball screen. For Wilson, her second. Bird has five, excuse me, four assists so far in this first half. Forgot that Wilson had erased the opportunity for a fifth moments ago. Bird has to chuck. Can't finish. Wanted a foul on the three. And Sue Bird is trying to say that the rim was hit on that putback attempt from underneath. And that the shot clock should have reset. Let's see. Does it hit the rim here on the putback? Not from Bird, it doesn't. Does it right there? Oh, the, uh, does the Underneath? underside of the rim count? I'm not sure. Either way, Lloyd's going to make that one count on another Vegas turnover, their ninth of the first half. Vegas did a much better job in the first quarter of not allowing turnovers that turned into easy looks the other way. A 7-0 Seattle run. Allen, I mean, Allen has been unhinged with these turnovers since coming into the game. Stay tuned for the WNBA Halftime Report presented by State Farm. Rebecca Brunson, a five-time WNBA champion, will be our guest analyst with LaChina Robinson holding it down in the studio. Seattle lead, largest of the game, it's nine. Lloyd, good fake, her jumper is smooth. You said Jewel Lloyd would have to step up with Stewart on the bench. Lloyd now in double figures. Yeah, we, should, we saw her in game two with 28 points. She, we know that she can shoulder the load offensively. Jewel Lloyd, the little head fake, pull up. Pretty stuff. We are. 
Bill Lambeer takes a timeout. Chance for a two for one for Vegas. The Seattle's on a 9 0 run. They have an 11 point lead. Sue Bird. Yeah, we've seen a lot of this in this series. Yeah, Sue Bird doing Sue Bird things. Her eyes looking one way. So that's where everyone on the defense is looking as well. But Natasha Howard knows, uh uh, if I'm open, she's going to get it to me. The no look down court pass has been in vogue from Sue Bird in this series. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Meanwhile, you know, Lindsay Allen put in a very tough spot by Bill Lambeer in Las Vegas. This was the starting point guard for much of the season, was moved to the bench and out of the rotation in the playoffs, didn't play at the end of that series against Connecticut games three, four, and five, had played just eight total minutes through the first two games of these finals, came in here in the second quarter as McBride buries a big three for Vegas, and she had four turnovers in less than three minutes. Yeah, I really feel for her. Clearly a player right now whose confidence is shaking a little bit. That's a hard spot to be put in. About a three-second difference game in shot clock. McBride executing the two for one out of the timeout. And Bird throws it away. Lloyd athletically saves it. And Howard gets fouled by Wilson. And that will be number three on Asia Wilson. So a near turnover not only turns into a chance for points, but a costly foul. Well, first of all, great hustle by Jewel Lloyd and then attacking Natasha Howard. Taking it right at Asia Wilson. Asia should not take the foul there. Just go straight up. Howard misses the first. And Wilson going to check out here now after the third foul. So not going to take any chances on a rebound or this final possession if you're Bill Lambeer. Howard hits the second. Seattle does have a foul to give. And there, Sue Bird will give it on the floor. Just the second personal from Bird, and it'll be a side out of bounds for Las Vegas. Vegas jumped out to a nine-point lead early in the first. Seattle took control back and has been able to extend what was a two-point lead with seven minutes to go in the second, and Brianna Stewart going to the bench for the third foul. Swords gives it up, and Howard will end the half with that steal. The Seattle Storm, a nine-point lead at halftime, trying to ensure championship number four for this franchise, and remarkably, Seattle outscoring Las Vegas 16 to 10 after Brianna Stewart's third foul at the 713 mark of the second. Yeah, you have to think Vegas was thrilled when she went on to the game. That was their opportunity to make the push, but it's been a well-balanced Seattle Storm team all season long. Holly Rose standing by with Gary Kloppenberg. Well, Coach, Las Vegas was shooting 70% in that first quarter. What did you change? Because they're down to 38% for the game right now defensively. I mean, we were just a little bit loose uh, with, with Asia. Um, you know, we wanted to get be, play her a lot more physically and, and, you know, bring another body to her. I thought we just kind of started out soft. And I think uh, Mercedes Russell came in and started to do a really good job keeping the ball out of her hands. And, you know, I think, I think we turned them over a couple of times, able to get a running game going a little bit. How did you absorb Brianna Stewart on the bench with those three fouls with seven minutes left to go in that half? Yeah, it was, it's difficult. I mean, we still have some good scorers out there. We, you know, have some other things we can go to when she's out of there. But uh, fortunately, we'll get her back here this next uh, quarter. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Appreciate it. All right, Holly, the State Farm halftime with China Robinson, Rebecca Brunson coming up. Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson, Sue Bird in intense. First half of action in game three. Jewel Lloyd in the storm with a nine point advantage at the half. Welcome back to the WNBA Finals 2020 presented by YouTube TV. Getting ready to start the third quarter of game three of these best of five finals. Seattle a 2 0 series lead and a 43 34 lead on Las Vegas as we welcome you back inside our ESPN studios. Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. Now, Vegas got off to a great start in this game. Asia Wilson looked terrific, but then the end of the first quarter and really the entirety of the second quarter, Seattle able to impose its will. Yeah, Asia Wilson was involved early. Uh, Vegas was looking to get her touches inside the paint, and she was able to produce 14 points in that first quarter here. Big to big passing, you know I love that. <laughs> Asia Wilson getting some point paints. 
paint points. And then going one on one with Brianna Stewart. The first quarter for Seattle, Brianna Stewart had it going on the other end of the floor. She had 11 points in that half, all in the first quarter. She gets in foul trouble, goes to the bench. Jewel Lloyd says, All right, now it's my time. Lloyd, no points in the first quarter. All 10 of hers came in the second frame. Wilson with 14 all in the first. Stewart and Lloyd each in double figures. And the commissioner of the WNBA, Kathy Engelberg is in Bradenton and she is with Holly Rowe. Well, thank you so much for joining me and Commissioner Engelbert, as we near the finish line for this unprecedented WNBA season, what are some of the wins that the league takes away after making this successful season work? Well, Holly, if you think about it, so much could have gone wrong and didn't go wrong. So that's the wins to me, health and safety, social justice platform, and just really this great combination of competition and community. I couldn't be happier. You know, it's so hard to believe to me, but you're just now over a year on the job, the craziest year any executive has ever had in a new position. What are some of the things you've learned that you think other business people could learn of navigating through this pandemic and having a successful time? Yeah, I definitely think when you're in the middle of a crisis, the decisions you make will be something that lasts for a long time. So you actually have to make it based on great scenario planning. Um, you have to be very agile. And I think, you know, um, in a pandemic like this or in any crisis, So time to fix some of the things so we've been able to kind of fix some of the things this summer by having this season all right well thank you so much a wonderful season here what are some of the planning that's already going forward for next season well lots of scenario plan watching the virus you know we want fans in our seats our owners want fans in the seats so lots of transformation ahead. thank you so much thank you Holly. thank you well, this league so blessed to have Kathy Engelbert as its commissioner and what a job the WNBA has done to put on this season in its entirety in Bradenton, Florida and be here for the finals. Seattle, of course, hoping this unique season ends tonight. Vegas looking to extend it. Seattle a 2-0 series lead. Game three of these best of five finals. A nine point lead to start the third for the Storm. Stewart can't curl it in. Lloyd on the follow. No, but Howard, third time's the charm. Yeah, you see Natasha Howard there. She is so good when she has bounce in her legs. And because of foul trouble, keep in mind, both Howard and Stewart oh, played a lot less minutes in that first half than they typically do. Asia Wilson played all but one. Just 11 minutes apiece for Howard and Stewart in that first half because of foul trouble. Stewart with three fouls, Howard with two, Bird poked it, Vegas gets it back, and Wilson hits the jumper, her first field goal since two minutes to go in the first. But the first two possessions for Vegas, they were putting the ball in Angel McClotry's hands. They do need her to get going on the offensive end. Sue Bird getting going for Seattle. Bird hits her first three of the game. She now has five points, five assists. Bird averaging 13 assists through the first two games of the finals, which would be a finals record. Mickey Teasley currently holds the record at 11 assists per game. That won't go. Swords on the follow, rolls off. Stewart holds in the rebound. Lloyd can't hit, and McBride left alone for the board. Seattle has won a record 10 consecutive finals games. Their last loss in a finals game came in 04 versus Connecticut. Clark on the steal. Lloyd, bodies in, couldn't finish. Good D there in transition from Las Vegas. And on the other end, Swords unable to finish. And now it's Seattle's turn to dash. Bird throws it away and a whistle against Las Vegas before the pass. It'll go against Angel McCautry, her third. It's so important for Vegas for Angel McCautry to get going on the offensive end of the floor. She is capable ha of having big bursts and we saw that in the semifinals against the Connecticut Sun. Kayla McBride also needs to get going offensively for Vegas. Yeah, it was the 16 points from Angel McCautry as McCautry is going to get hit with her fourth foul there. Alicia Clark will go to the line. 
you cannot compound your frustration. You, you were upset with the, the third foul that was called on you. You cannot reach in there because now Angel McCautry is going to have to come out of the basketball game. You're a veteran. You cannot allow that. And you mentioned McCautry, her 16 points in the third quarter of game four save Vegas this season. Hey, the Aces, they're looking to force a game four, which would happen Thursday, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Seattle currently a 2-0 series lead, a win tonight, and of course the Storm become WNBA champions for a fourth time. As Clark hits both free throws and Seattle's lead has swelled to 14. How does Vegas come back here? Young, oh, that's not going to help. Emma Cannon, the offensive foul. And that is an astounding 13 turnovers now for Las Vegas. You see Emma Cannon there. She's just not established early enough. Gets the foul called. Yeah, Sue Bird runs right into her outstretched leg. Can you have an outstretched leg? Yeah, you, well, of course you can. Ideally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stewart hits the three. Brianna Stewart connects from downtown, and the lead is 17. Howard the poke away, Lloyd the steal, Vegas getting sloppy, Seattle taking advantage. It's a 19 point lead, and you wonder if the storm are starting to taste it. The Seattle Storm have been here before, winning the championship in 2018. They have to be able to sense it, to taste it. There's sharks right now with blood in the water. Today, Las Vegas Aces players participated in a virtual Her Time to Play community conversation presented by AT&T for girls from the greater Las Vegas community. The event featured a discussion about the challenges girls and women face in sports and in life and an at-home exercise circuit. This is part of the Las Vegas Aces continued commitment to empowering women and girls in their community to play basketball in a positive and healthy way. Third quarter of game three of these best of five WNBA finals. The Seattle Storm a 19 point lead and a 2-0 series edge. And this is the moment where Vegas really has to tighten up. Get the ball into the right player's hands. You want to see Asia Wilson involved on the offensive end. They've got to stop turning the basketball over. They have to dig in and get some stops on this end of the floor. Turnovers were such a point of emphasis. Bill Lambier speaking with us this morning and they have been a real issue for Vegas here in game three. Howard can't finish. They came out playing cleanly. Had just one turnover until the 242 mark of the first, but had three in those final two minutes and 42 seconds in the first. Another here. They now have 15 on the game. Nice breakup from Wilson, but another chance here for Seattle, and Clark will calm things down with Lloyd. Bird working behind Stewart. Gets it back to her. Stewart. Fading away, can't get it to drop in, and Robinson, the weak side, rebound. Vegas has shown the ability to make a push. Can they hear? It starts with a bucket from Cannon. All right, so they've got two stops in a row, Vegas does. They've had them on turnover, but that's what they have to continue to do, string together multiple yep. stops. Yep. We saw them overcome a 16-point deficit okay. to win game five against Connecticut. They overcame a 19-point deficit in game one of this series in the third quarter, tied it, and then ended up losing. But that is a number that I'm sure will not make Bill Lambeer smile. I mean, he's not an easy guy to predict what makes him smile anyway, but I'm just sure that won't. In the corner, Lloyd connects on a three. Jewel Lloyd with 15 points as her terrific postseason continues. Six assists now for Bird. There's the trap. McBride trying to dribble out of it. Eight to shoot. Cannon. Seattle will live with that. A possession where Asia Wilson does not get a touch. 
Angel McCautry on the bench with four fouls. Stewart was falling. Cannon and Howard got tangled up. And a foul will go against Emma Cannon. Another time, Sue Bird is going to find her open teammate, the look away. I mean, it's so effective. Defense follows ball handler's eyes, and ball handler then passes to open teammate. <laughs> Optometry optional for Sue Bird as Stewart gets in for two. And with Emma Cannon now in foul trouble, you have Sierra Burdick getting earlier minutes than we've seen in the playoffs. Vegas looking for answers. Seattle's largest lead of the series. And a foul here against Seattle. Brianna Stewart with 16 points and We've talked about it before, Ry, the wingspan, 7-1. If she can get her shoulders past the defender, even with the second helper coming, so easy, makes it look so easy getting to the rim. Brianna Stewart was able to play just two minutes and 47 seconds of that second quarter. Went to the bench, picking up her third foul, and has picked up here in the third where she left off in the first. Stewart has averaged 29 and a half points through the first two games of these finals. Oh, Bird snuck it into Stewart, but the bucket will not count foul on the floor against Las Vegas, and I believe that is going to be their fifth. Put them over the limit and put Stewart at the line. Brianna Stewart didn't even want that foul call. She wanted to get the easy two. Instead, Jackie Young hit with the personal, and Stewart at the line with Vegas over the limit. You know, it's something Holly has pointed out throughout this season at the beginning of this series, but worth repeating, Brianna Stewart returning after missing all of 2018, excuse me, 2019, with a torn Achilles, which she suffered playing in Russia at the end of her season, missed all of last season, and has come back here in 2020. And I mean, not only has she looked as good as she did when she won the MVP in 2018, this is not a cliche. I mean, this is the truth. She has actually looked even better here in 2020. Hey, one of the things she could work on when she wasn't allowed to be mobile was her ball handling. And you've seen that throughout the course of the season, especially in the open floor, how much better she has gotten with her ball handling. Young leans in. And gets the roll. Jackie Young with her first field goal of the game. Yeah, with this lineup on the floor, Jackie Young has got to give Vegas something on the offensive end of the floor. McCautry is out. She has to be another guard who can give them a lift. Lloyd, nice look. Lloyd to Howard. She couldn't finish. There's a stop for Vegas. Can they put together some scores? Deep catch, Wilson. And if you give Asia Wilson the ball there, she's going to score. Yeah, just a great job establishing early position. Okay, Vegas, can you get some stops here and scores the other way? We've seen the comeback ability all season, especially in the playoffs for Vegas. And a whistle here against Las Vegas. That's going to put Seattle at the line again. Asia Wilson virtually unstoppable even with multiple defenders when she gets this kind of deep post position He's gonna need some more of that to finish out this third quarter And young picks up her second Stewart back to the line Voter registration deadlines are coming up soon. Don't wait. Go to rockthevote.org to get registered and make your plan to vote today. Do you have your plan to vote, Ryan? I do. Good. I do. Going to go in a few days early? Yeah? Yeah. Early voting? Why not? Stewart misses the second free throw. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, I just had a flash when Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson are defending each other, scoring over the top of each other, that when we have an Olympics, there's a great chance that those two players can be playing alongside of each other for USA basketball. How beautiful will that be if you're a member of the U.S. national team? These are two of the best in the world right now, and it is just a blessing to watch them both compete right now. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. It'll be as beautiful as that dime was from Lloyd to Stewart. Wow. 
What a feed, and Brianna Stewart has now set a WNBA record six straight finals games scoring at least 20 points. And those are the only six finals games she has played in her career. Canada has been really strong tonight. Keep in mind, much like the regular season, the playoffs have been these players playing every other day. And we've talked about the depleted bench for Vegas. And they look tired, Ryan. And there's been at times this series where they have looked tired, both physically and mentally. The player who hasn't looked tired at all is Brianna Stewart rim running. Every single possession, she runs hard to the rim. And that time, Jewel Lloyd delivers the dime. It's usually Sue Bird making the pass. But look at the strength and the speed on that pass. And Stewie finishing inside as good as they come in terms of running end to end. That was a pretty look at it, huh? Yeah, it was. <laughs> How about that record for Brianna Stewart? And, you know, you get the feeling that she's going to have some more chances throughout her career. To play in the final? Yeah, I'd say so. I think. Stewart, of course, a four-time champion at UConn and four times the most outstanding player at the Final Four. Three times the... National Player of the Year, has already been a league MVP and a finals MVP and could be on the brink of another finals MVP if Seattle can close things out tonight. Seattle D has completely locked Vegas down after the first quarter. That one tipped by Stewart, it'll stay here with Vegas. You're kind of waiting for that moment where Vegas gets a little bit of a run going and just gets out there and starts playing with real toughness and real energy, but it hasn't come. Wilson can't hit the jumper. It's also difficult for a team that does not shoot threes to make up big deficits in a hurry. McCautry, two on two. And McCautry couldn't squirm it in, but does get the whistle. She'll shoot two. I was vertical. I jumped. I jumped up with her. Yeah. So that's legal, right? Vertical. She hit me right here in my in my gut. You hear Alicia Clark? I was with her. I was vertical, right? Verticality. I know it hurts. I love the conversation <laughs> with the officials that the mic is picking up. And one of the benefits of the wobble, right? It's easier to hear those conversations. Yes. Sometimes Holly has to whisper. Sometimes we get to listen. <laughs> Angel McCautry, you saw 0-11 in finals games in her career, went to the finals three times with Atlanta. They were swept each time. Epiphany Prince hits the jumper. Epiphany Prince has been a bit quiet tonight, but wow, was she enormous in game one. Seattle going with their corner action that we've seen Vegas use so much throughout the course of this season. Seattle scoring. Jackie Young won't hit. Stewart another rebound. Stewart at 15 boards in game one. Here's Stewart. Free lane to the cup. Brianna Stewart with 23 points. And Seattle is pouring it on. Robinson alone hits the jumper. Nice look from Asia Wilson. Shot clock turned off. Canada kicks it out. Clark, you bet. On a three. The lead has grown to 27, and Danielle Robinson elects not to take a heave before the quarter expires. Sue Bird fired up. She can sense it. Coronation is on the brick. Where are you looking? 
Two birds looking one way, but delivering to Jewel Lloyd. Brianna Stewart looking the eyes of her second championship. Welcome back here with Seattle's Brianna Stewart. And you were on the bench in foul trouble that first quarter. What's going through your mind over there as you know you can't help your team sitting down? Um, you know, I can help them with my energy. Just continuing to be loud. Uh, I made some dumb mistakes as far as fouls, fouls, excuse me, and um, just continuing to be ready for the second half. So how did you attack the second half now, really gaining some separation with 23 points now? Um, I used my, my energy from sitting on the bench and, and ran the floor as much as I could. You did look very fresh. Thank you. <laughs> well, Brianna Stewart, just an absolutely generational talent. 23 points, a 9 of 13 shooting. And on the brink of her second title in just her fifth season. Stewart flicks it out to Clark and swords the rebound. Vegas outscored by Seattle in that third, 32 to 14, as Jackie Young hits the jumper. The only other teams in WNBA history with four titles, the Minnesota Lynx together, together, and the Houston together. Comets. Seattle could join those illustrious franchises tonight. The Lynx, of course, the most recent dynasty we saw as Clark squeezes it in, winning in 2011, 2013, 2015, and 2017. They had the odd year thing going on while the San Francisco Giants had the even year thing going on on the off years of that. Isn't that weird? I mean, the Giants that, that, had 2012, no, 2014, 2014, 2016. It was happening at the same time. <laughs> and there you have it. Seattle right now locked up with L.A., Phoenix, and Detroit. But that is eight minutes and 56 seconds away from a change in. Canada pizza pies at home. Yeah, she's, she's been really good. And, and, and her role as a bench player her rookie year two years ago and then last year starting every game because sue bird was injured and then this year she's toggled between the two because sue only played half of the regular season games because of her her knee and jordan cannon in this playoffs has done a really nice job coming in being a burst of energy providing some scoring punch off the bench outstanding use of toggle <laughs> A 21 to 8 bench points advantage for Seattle. Young gets the whistle. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. I love that. You hear Alicia Clark. You saw the frustration from Mercedes Russell that she got the foul called, but you hear Alicia Clark, the veteran, her voice. Yellow, come here. Yellow, come here. Like, let's forget about that little foul. We just have come together. Stop fouling. We were 829 away from a championship. Who's got a shooter? No, we at least one left. You know, you think about Jackie Young, the young woman at the line, the first pick of the 2019 draft, and while she's had up and down moments throughout the playoffs, a really big step forward this season for Jackie Young was given more of a role. No Kelsey Plum this season because of injury after Plum really blossomed a year ago, especially in the playoffs. No Liz Cambage in the front court this season for Las Vegas and. Others had to step up, Young one of them, and she really did throughout the regular season became a fixture off the bench for Las Vegas as they set a WNBA record averaging 35 points per game off the bench, and Young was at the heart of that attack. Yeah, she's done a nice job here in the fourth quarter so far, going to her strength, which is the mid-range pull-up jumper. That's one of many Brianna Stewart strengths. 26 points now for Stewart. She's three of four from downtown. Swords lays it in. Stewart was five of eight from deep in game one, five of eight from deep in game two, and three of four thus far tonight. Stewart got fouled on the entry. Brianna Stewart, when she's this wide open, she is going to make it. And a really nice job, Jordan Canada. The reason Stewie was so open, the penetration and then the kick back outside. Pin. Pin. Returning, number 24, Jewel Boy. Replacing number 
The all-time record for most points per game in a final series held by Angel McCautry. She averaged 31 per game in 2011 when the Dream were swept by Minnesota. That is in some danger, thanks to Stewart. As Lloyd can't hit, Stewart entered this game 29 and a half through the first two, and she has 26 so far tonight. Morgan Tuck in for Seattle. Those are her first minutes of the playoffs. Rodgers can't hit. Let me ask you something. The result certainly is not in doubt, but if you're Seattle and Gary Kloppenberg, are you making sure to still get Sue Bird some floor time in this fourth? I think you have, you're having that kind of nice take by Tuck. You're having that conversation with Sue Bird. If she wants the floor time, you give her the floor time. I was going to ask her, but she can't hear us. Yeah. So. <laughs> Six minutes and 25 seconds to go in the fourth quarter of game three. Seattle a 29 point advantage. It has been thorough and dominant from the Seattle Storm as Vegas turns it over for a 16th time. The Storm have shot it at 51% here in game three. They shot 50% as a team in game one, 57% as a team in game two, and this is against an outstanding Las Vegas defense. That was second in defensive rating all season long. The team that was first, Seattle. Canada got whacked by Young. And it's going to stay right here with the Storm. Timeout on the floor. Sue Bird in the Storm. 556 away from their fourth championship. The WNBA Finals 2020, presented by YouTube TV, is brought to you by Nike. No more sitting on the sidelines. Register at vote.nike.com. And by Taco Bell. Order ahead and pick up your favorites at our contactless drive-thru. Let's take a look at who's delivering, brought to you by DoorDash. Brianna Stewart has delivered in a big way, not only tonight, but throughout the course of the playoffs, and in particular in the finals. Ryan, in the WNBA finals, Brianna Stewart is shooting 63%, many of them rim runs, like the one we saw right there, finishing inside, hitting beautifully from the perimeter as well. well I mean, look at that. That's a lot of blue O's. She's early in her career, but she is well on her way to being an all-time great. And performances like this, at this time of year, help to boost that legacy and, and certainly get remembered forever. Yeah, she's cementing the notion that she, you know, is one of the best players in the world and one of the best champions. You know, Asia Wilson was the MVP this season. She got my vote as MVP this season, but Brianna Stewart, without question, has been the best player on the floor throughout the course of the finals. Holly? Well, you know, Sue Bird was nearing the end of her career when they got the draft pick that got Brianna Stewart to Seattle, and she has really been re-energized. Once they got Stewie, I think she has fought to stay on the floor, stay with this team, because she knew that this was a special player and they could win more championships. Sue said, you know, it's kind of like a big sister relationship. I want the best for her, and whether I'm her teammate or not in the future, I'm always going to be pushing her and helping her so she can succeed at the highest level, and this has been a very special combination here. Those two have had chemistry, they've had competitive spirit, and they are winning together yeah it, it's perfectly summed up holly and and no doubt i mean there was some questions as to whether or not sue bird was going to stay in seattle because of the point in time the franchise was at but re-energized with the back-to-back -back years drafting lloyd and stewart the storm have built a championship core that is about to win its second title in three seasons can we just bring up the little post player for Seattle, Jordan Canada, first to the post move inside <laughs> and just battled to get an offensive board? 13 off the bench for Canada. She had a big fourth quarter in game two. She's played an enormous role for the Seattle team, both in their championship year in 2018, as well as last year and now again this season. And how about Carolyn Swords? Well-deserved hugs and high fives 
after just an incredible journey back on the floor here in 2020 and a key contributor for a Vegas team that made it all the way to the finals. Lloyd cutting through, curling it up and in. Jewel Lloyd has a 19 point game three. Add in yeah. eight rebounds and four assists. That's another thing we've seen with this Seattle team, Rebecca Lloyd, who would have bursts of greatness, but not necessarily the consistency. She has been consistent all year and throughout these playoffs. Yeah, when you look at the pieces that they presumably have returning next, next year, especially the scoring core of Brianna Stewart and Jewel Lloyd, you have to be excited if you're a Seattle Storm fan. Mag Bagor raises up, can't finish. Rebound Las Vegas, benches are emptied. It is all cosmetic at this point. As Lloyd comes back for the steal, a 33-point hammer being dropped by the Seattle Storm. Morgan Tuck can't hit the three. You brought it up before, Rebecca. This Aces team fought so hard, big minutes in game five in a five-game series against Connecticut. They lost key pieces of their bench, and as a result, they certainly look fatigued, and Seattle just looks excellent. Well, Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart, looking for title number two together. They're all smiles in this fourth quarter, ready to party and celebrate. You're watching the WNBA Finals 2020, presented by YouTube TV. Well, players to win multiple WNBA Finals MVPs is a short list. Cynthia Cooper with four of them. With Houston, Lisa Leslie back-to-back -back in L.A. How about Diana Taurasi in 2009 and then 2014 with the Phoenix Mercury and Sylvia Fowles recently, 2015 and 2017. Brianna Stewart on the brink of adding her name to that list. The Finals MVP in 2018 and it would be shocking if she's not the finals MVP here in 2020. Yeah, without question. I would imagine there will be a unanimous vote. Just two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter of game three of these WNBA finals. Langhorn getting some run, can't hit. Rebecca, let's wrap up this season for Las Vegas. I mean, they were without two key pieces this year, Liz Cambage opting out because of COVID-19, and then Kelsey Plum injured. Dierica Hamby unable to play here in the finals as well as the final two games of the semifinals. Still an outstanding season, a great run, and a lot to look forward to for this Vegas team in 2021. Yeah, without question. I mean, they have the league MVP in Asia Wilson, a phenomenal year. Angel McCautry was as good as we've seen her be in a lot of years. Do you see Asia getting emotional on the sideline? And depending on what happens in free agency, Liz Cambage is an unrestricted free agent, but if she comes back and Plum is healthy and they return the other big pieces, watch out. They are going to be loaded next year. Two minutes, two minutes, Under two minutes remaining, Canada hops into another bucket. She has 15 points, five rebounds, three assists, and 16 minutes off the bench. You know, Rebecca, so many sacrifices were made to make this season happen by these women, by different members of the WNBA League office, certainly from our crew who have been down in Bradenton for an exorbitant amount of time. Gary Kloppenberg has made his own personal sacrifices, which Holly can fill us in more on in just a moment. But also Holly Rowe, who's been in the wobble for us, documenting this season as only she could throughout three months of action now without leaving. And, and just really incredible dedication to this league from so many different parties to bring us this very special season. And, and Holly, Certainly, 
the, the sacrifices made by Gary Kloppenberg, they hit an extraordinary level. Well, Coach Kloppenberg had to miss his daughter Carlotta's wedding, and it was very difficult for him. He's missed a game before to go to her college graduation, but he said hopefully they'll wear the dress, they'll put the suit on, and they will reenact it for him when he's out of this bubble. Um, but just imagine the personal cost to all of these people. There's Carlotta Kloppenberg, and uh, I know it was devastating to him, but he had to do what he had to do this season, and that is bring home a championship. And I know Carlotta, who is a coach herself, will understand, and hopefully they'll reenact it for Dad when he gets home. They won't wear the dress. She'll just wear the dress, but it's going to be a beautiful <laughs> moment nonetheless. It really is, and, you know, we can't thank all of you enough who have watched this entire season. You know, so many just beautiful reflections of the growing viewership and appreciation for this league and the outstanding basketball from these women. And don't forget, we will have a championship ceremony following the conclusion of this game. Seattle just 52.6 seconds away from their fourth title and Sue Bird, her fourth title. Has not had to play in this fourth quarter after the lead crescendo to 35 for Seattle. High expectations this season for the Storm and they have been completely and fully met. Under 30 seconds to go here in game three. That jumper is good from Allen, and the Seattle Storm can dribble this one out now. The dancing has begun. The smiles, you can see them through the masks. Utter and complete domination in a year we will never forget. The Seattle Storm are the team we will always remember. 2020 WNBA champions. The sweep is complete. 92 59, the final in game three. And it is championship number four for the Seattle Storm. Seattle came into this season as the overwhelming favorite to be the champion and they had some interesting twists and turns throughout the course of the regular season injury to Sue Bird but through it all they remain the favorites and Rye yes the champions once again. Jewel Lloyd, a massive season, a huge playoffs and 19 points, nine rebounds tonight. She is with Holly Rowe. Well, Jewel Lloyd, this has been by far your most consistent, focused year of basketball we've ever seen. How were you able to be in this zone, in this moment, during one of the most difficult seasons? You know, this this year has been a lot for me. This is for Kobe, Gigi, and the Bryant family, and for Bianca Taylor. We had a lot of emotions coming to this game. Uh, for me this season, I had to play to him. He, uh, this is my first season without him, and so I surrounded myself with people who knew him, and I just focused in. And I, I love my support staff. I love you guys, LH, uh, Kyrie, Phil, um, my parents. I, I mean, they all have my back, so it's, uh, it's very emotional for me. It is tough. You wear 24 because of Kobe. He has watched game film with you. He has been there for you after games, but you didn't have his voice with you this season. What was it that you heard inside of you that let you be great? in this moment representing him? You know, it's, it's, it's the gold shoes. Knowing that I'm unique, I'm special. Um, I wore the shoes because of Kobe, right? His jersey number is everything. And he, he's the first person that ever believed in me before I, before I got into the league. So, um, yeah! It's special, it's special. Thank you. And Jewel the Gold Mamba, you showed up big, you performed well, and you have been at your best this season. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. Well, what a season from the Seattle Storm. Yeah. Complete and total 
domination in these finals. The largest margin of victory ever in a finals game here in game three, a 33 point victory for the Seattle Storm and a sweep to win their fourth championship as we get ready for the WNBA championship presentation. It's time to send things over to PA announcer Matt Pittman. Now for the presentation of the 2020 WNBA Finals Trophy and the WNBA Finals MVP Award, please welcome back ESPN's Holly Rowe. Well, thank you so much. This has been one of the more unique, difficult, challenging, and rewarding WNBA seasons we've ever seen. Here to present the 2020 WNBA Championship presented by YouTube TV is a great leader who has gotten us through this season safe and healthy, Commissioner Kathy Engelbert. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. I want to start with the following. Brianna Taylor, Michelle Cousseau, Sandra Bland. We will continue to say her name. What an unprecedented season, an entire league in one place for the entire season. Can't be happier with how it's worked out. Thank you to all the unsung heroes that we had during this season. And now we get to crown a champion. But first, congratulations to the Las Vegas Aces on their great season. <laughs> Seattle, we have the ownership group here. Lisa Brummel, Ginny Gilder, Dawn Trudeau, and CEO and GM Alicia Valvanis. Congratulations. And now, the 2020 WNBA champions, their fourth championship. Please welcome the Seattle Storm. Trophy, it's the fourth time in your career. You are undefeated in the finals. What has made you and this group so special in this unprecedented season? Yeah, undefeated when I get out of the first round of the playoffs, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm saying, we're, <laughs> we're either in the finals or we're not. Um, it's been amazing. I mean, Kathy alluded to it, you alluded to it. It's been a really tough but rewarding season. And this group, you know, Megan said it in her Players' Tribune article, we're chill. We're chill. We were actually, like, kind of made for a wobble. We don't get too high with stuff. We don't get too low. And I think you saw that off the court with what we stood for, and you saw it on the court with how we played. And I don't know. This is crazy, to be honest. I can't believe I'm here right now. It is amazing that you're here right now, not to take it away from what your whole team has done. But for you personally, very few people have had 16 years between championships. How do you stay on the court and play the best you ever have in moments like these after all this time? I don't ask them how old they were in 2004. That's what, that's what I don't do. I think they're, are the, is that the goat? Is that the goat? Okay. Goat, sheep, you know. Um, no, I mean, a lot of hard work. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't cheat. I don't cheat the game. I do what I have to do to, to be able to play at a high level. And I mean, you saw it, this is, this is not one person, it's not even two, three people, our entire team, that's why we're able to succeed. So it's been an honor to play with you guys. Um, again, I can't believe I'm standing here right now, it's pretty crazy. It's not just that you're standing here, it is how you've done it as a group. You set records each and every game for assists. It's been the Seattle flow, you call it the chill, I call it the flow, but it has been every single person on this team in key moments. How do you describe, turn to look at these women and look at these faces and what they've brought? I'll cry. Um, no, you have to buy in. And this is something that started probably five years ago. Jenny was our coach. We had just drafted Jewel, we were rebuilding. Um, we talked about this even in 2018. So 
it's hard. You got to buy in, and it takes a lot. And they know if they don't do it, I'm going to yell at them. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sue Bird, you've never cheated the game and you didn't in this moment. Congratulations. Thank you so And now much. joining us to present the MVP, please welcome back Commissioner Kathy Engelbert. Okay, with a dominant performance and 85 points in three games, an average of 28 points, close to eight rebounds, unanimous MVP for the 2020 WNBA Finals, Brianna Stewart. Brianna, you know, it wasn't long ago that uh, your future was uncertain with an injury that's hard to come back from. What are you grateful for in this moment tonight? Six straight games with 20 or more points, a new finals record, that you didn't just come back, but you came back stronger than ever. How are you proud? Um, I think just, uh, Sue touched on it a little bit, but just, you know, the resiliency. Obviously, I uh, got hurt in 2019, and, you know, the unknown, the future was a little unknown for me as far as, you know, the comeback and stuff like that. But uh, to be able to come back to this group, Seattle, uh, the team, the owners, the, the entire franchise, um, everybody supported me and uh, helped, me, helped me get to this point. You talk about the franchise four WNBA championships. You are now in the rare air of dynasties in history in the WNBA, the Houston Comets, the Minnesota Lynx, and now the Seattle Storm with four championships. What does that make you feel for Seattle? Seattle has gone through so much during all this time with COVID and everything that you get to bring home another championship to that city. Yeah, um, first, I think we should shout out Dan and Sammy, because we know that you guys are watching, so. Um, and yeah, I mean, Seattle, the city of Seattle has always had our back. And even though we had to, to kind of come to the wobble, we were playing from afar, uh, we had, the, the utmost support from, from everybody, and uh, we're bringing another one back. You did have a lot of support. This has been unprecedented. What were some times, what was the greatest challenge you felt like you had to get through here collectively as a group in the Wubble, all that it took to be here for this moment? Um, I think the, the greatest challenge was just, you know, all the adversity. You know, we knew we were coming to the Wubble. We were one of the only teams to come with our entire roster, um, and everybody bought in. And we didn't know what to expect uh, from one day to the next. But as Sue said, you know, we're a chill team. And we kind of rolled with the punches and continue to play our game and, and do what we do. And like I said, not with the champs. You are indeed. Your 2020 WNBA champs are the Seattle Storm. Thank you to everybody for making this a special, historic, difficult, rewarding, challenging season. If you'll turn and look at the screens behind you, we have a special surprise for all of you. Please enjoy. We have Dan Hughes, Sammy Whitcomb coming in from Australia, where she's home for the delivery of her new baby. see the family members and friends of members of the storm sending video congratulations live following a championship celebration in Bradenton.